We're going to um, develop further on something that you did last week. You looked at compound interest before, but you didn't do the formula. Let me try and explain why we're doing this as a separate thing. Okay. Look back at this question you did just now about $850 and 3.5% per annum for that number of years. Okay. This is simple interest, which means that each year that you've got it in there, and you're doing it four times, you get that much interest, and it's the same every single time. Okay? So in fact, if we had changed this and made this just one, it wouldn't be $119, uh, it'd be a quarter. So I'm guessing that'd be $29 and 25 cents? Someone check that, 119 divided by four, if someone got it. Can someone do, it's my mental arithmetic, okay? 29.75. 75, I, I did it the wrong way around. Okay, so you've got this, and then the more years you add on, you just keep on adding this number again and again and again, which is why if you multiply by four, you'll just go back where you started, you have 119, right? Compound interest though, you already know, it doesn't work like this. It doesn't give you the same amount over and over again for however many years. How does it differ? I want you to explain the way that compound interest is different. Hmm. Yeah, go ahead, Kate. Can we go with this amount of money? Can we just stay with yeah. that? Yeah? So, so then what, what happens differently versus this one? So once you add 29, 75 to 850, it becomes like a bigger number, and then you take the interest from that bigger number. That's perfect. Okay. So you have 1850. So I actually want us to write down the working that corresponds to what Kate just said. Okay. So under here, I want you to write down, remember, if we were to change this from a simple interest bank account to a compound interest bank account, what we're going to do is we're going to say after the first year. And I hope you remember doing this in your working. You had to do it year on year. You'd say, all right, at the end of the first year, I've got the original 850, and then I've got this extra bit of interest that I calculated. So I'm just going to add them up. At the end of that year, I'm going to have $879.75. And as was suggested, Rather than add 2975 again next year and 2975 the year after that and so on, I'm now going to recalculate the interest <coughs> off of this larger amount. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, look, I will have the principal, that's 879.75, and then I'm also going to have the new amount of interest. Now, can you help me work out what will the new amount of interest be? You can do it just like simple interest, right? It's going to be principal times the rate times the number of years. What's the principal now at this point in time? Yeah, it's that figure, isn't it? $879.75. What's the rate? It's this 3.5%. I do like writing it as a decimal, by the way. I think that's a good skill to practice. There you go. There's the 3.5%. What's the N? What's the number of years? One. It's just one year. I'm just going first year to the second year. Okay. Now, before you go ahead and you press the answer, I want you to notice, as we've seen in algebra before, there's a common factor between these two things. Do you notice that? There's the first term over here, and there's the second term over here, but there's a huge common factor in between both of them, which is the $879.75, right? The principal. So I just want to write that out the front. 87975. 1 plus 0 0.035. That's what I've got in there after I take out the factor. Are you with me so far? Now just before we leave off this line and actually calculate it, remember, this part is the principal. Just one lot means add another principal back. And this part represents the interest. Okay, can someone work out what the number is? Anyone got it? Surely we're in the 900s by now? 900 and... 10. 10? Uh, Thank you. Okay. Now, I could do this again for the third year 
But again, I'm going to do this all over again, but with a new principle, right? And I'm going to have to recalculate the principle every single time. But this is starting to get a little bit tiresome, right? And the more years I have to do this, the more frustrating it gets. So that's why we're developing this formula. I actually want you to go to where you wrote your heading. And um, I actually want you to cross out the word formula. Because all we're doing, I actually want it there and crossed out, is we're going to develop a shortcut for this. That's what most formulas are. It's not something that's, wow, we want you to remember something hard that's uh, difficult to cram into your brain. We're trying to save you time. This process is very, very slow <coughs> and repetitive too. <coughs> so is there some way we can shortcut the whole process? How can we go straight to four years or 40 years? I need a bit more space. The key is this line here. See, I, I factorized this, and you were probably thinking, why did we factorize? You could have just put this into your calculator just fine. You would have got the answer out and would have been correct. This line is the key. Here's what I'd like you to write under a compound interest formula. This number at the front, the uh, $879.75, it represents the principal. Do you agree? P for principal. That's the amount that you started with. These guys are so loud. Sorry. Then, I factorized, right? So P is on the outside of the brackets. What's on the inside? What's on the inside? Well, I am going to write the interest rate. But in addition to the interest rate, I've got the one, right? What does that one represent? Why do I add one? This one represents you start with the principal and then you add on the interest. Does that make sense? Every single year, you start with the principal, you add on the interest. Then you start with the principal again, you add on the interest. Now, we were doing it one year at a time, but if I want to do it lots and lots of years, all I have to do is, now don't write this down because I'm going to rub off in a second. If I wanted to do another year, I would multiply by one plus the interest rate again, right? Just like I did it here, you do it for the third year, the fourth year. If I wanted to do it again, I would just multiply by one plus r repeatedly. But this is a bit tiresome, right? What's a quicker way to write this? You can like square root it or cube root it. Yeah, so I can just write this with index notation. We're really good at index notation. So here's what I'm gonna write instead and what I'd like you to follow along with. <laughs> I'm going to raise this to a power. The number of years that you're doing it. Instead of multiplying by n like I did with simple interest, I'm raising to the nth power. I could just put a 4 there and that would show me what happens after 4 years. Now, this is the compound interest formula. I want you to look at it and then I want you to look at it next to the simple interest formula. In fact, I'm even going to write it underneath. They are remarkably similar. <laughs> what is the simple interest formula again? Okay, now I want you to notice how similar these are. Uh, they all have the same set of three numbers or three letters, right? You need the principal, you need to work out, I should have put that in capital so it's consistent. You need to know an interest rate. And then you need to know how long is that stuff in the bank account for, right? So very, very similar. They're taking the same ingredients, as it were. But here's the difference I want to highlight. This is actually not the full simple interest formula, is it? There's something on the other side. What's on the other side? It's the interest, right? So the question I asked you at the beginning, how much interest does $850 earn, yada, 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 this formula just hands it to you, right? Whereas, this guy up here does not give you interest. Look, see that? That's not the interest that you've earned. That's the whole amount that it's worth after two years, right? So actually, this is not I equals, but A equals. What we mean is, it's the total amount. If you guys uh, get bank statements in the mail still, I mean, usually most people get them by email, but you have two numbers right at the bottom of your bank statement. One of the numbers is how much interest did you earn this month, quarter, however often you get them. 
And then the final number is this one. So how much do you actually have that you could withdraw if you wanted to? Okay. So these two numbers are different and people often miss the fact that they're calculating two different things. So you've got the total amount for compound interest and then you've got the interest earned for simple interest. 